But two. Coming up right here. So we start down in the bottom left hand side. Our purple Protoss player from Jinnae Green Wings. This is Trap. Going up against the red Zerg in the top right from Infinity Gaming. This is Solar. Drone going to come down to the low ground, and we are going to be seeing the probe coming up here and towards the main base. The tree did not fall on stream, no, Rob. It fell uh, with me singing, editing VODs for YouTube. It was quite an anticlimactic. Well, it was actually very exciting when it fell down. I was a little bit scared because it made kind of sound, but yeah. Why would one have to subscribe to Wardy to see Master's Call of Seam replays? Because we're casting the tournament. The organizers don't really, um, or don't usually release the replays of these events. But they have no rules on us releasing the replays if we see fit. So we always release our replays to subs. So that is why you can subscribe to get them. You just, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You can be unhappy about it, but, I mean, if the replays aren't released elsewhere, like, the other casters aren't going to give to them, them to you either without subscribing, so. Final series of this tournament, guys. Um, final series of the day uh, for this tournament, but, of course, we've got another tournament that starts up in an hour and 25 minutes, so we're going to have to fi find a way to fill some time. I just... Just five best of threes doesn't fill that much time at all, does it? Ay ay ay. What's up, Kilo Kilo twenty three? Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. The subs are being kind of nice today, guys. These guys have just been going wild. It's uh, considering we've only had like two and a half hours of stream, it's uh, been pretty sub heavy. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yes, Innovation does finish the group in 4th place. Boom, now I get the replays. Yes, you do. Yeah, the new replay pack will go up. I mean, I just sent one out like a couple of days ago. Um, but we'll put a new one up soon. How the replay is organized once you sub, I have them all named and stuff. You know what, I'll even just show you. So when you download your replay pack, it will look a little bit like this. Hang on. This is our most recent replay pack that I'm going to show you guys on screen super quick. So this is our most recent replay pack that has literally hundreds of replays in, all labeled by matchup, players, and maps. And as you can see, there is quite a few of them. And that's just our most recent one. Uh, that's from the last, I think, couple of weeks of StarCraft. This month we've put out almost 500 replays, so loads of stuff available on the Discord if you guys want to check it out. Again, there's at least 600 replays on the new patch from this month, and obviously just more to come. Next one will be going up, next replay pack in the next couple of days or so. We try and release them around once every week. Oh, cool. Trap starts to head up to the top right side. I'm going to be poking in here. Double Oracle open, and again, we saw this earlier from Trap, and... Again, did find good damage again and again. So, I'm uh, just going to be seeing the Oracle turned away pretty quickly there. As you do see, this Oracle is also going to be coming across. So, a couple of Oracles gathering up together. As you do see, the Twilight Council about to finish up in the main base. Molding is coming back down. We see Resonating Claves getting started here from Trap. So again, that Resonant Enclave's on the way. Meanwhile, a few drones on the way up. Alert on the way up as well from Solar. A couple of drones going down as the Oracles fly in. Three, four workers killed, actually. So four workers picked off there at the moment. Trap continue to come in towards the upper right-hand side with these Adepts. 
On the far left, we do see a couple of Zerglings just running left to right, left to right. A couple more Zerglings uh, running in over here. As the Adepts will turn to fight against those a little bit further as well. Rotron about to finish, and as that Rotron gets finished up, Solo will just have access to the Roaches here to continue through. And, uh, yeah, I was going to see the Ling's going to jump in. And, uh, ooh, tries to catch the uh, Adept there, but doesn't quite manage to. I mean, Glaive's about to finish, right, but that's what the Roaches are for. So those Ling's are uh, just going to be backing away and getting that going. What's up, the Happy Traveler? Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub as well. Actually, only three subscribers away for 750. How wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for all the love. You guys have been ridiculously supportive as of late, so I really do appreciate it. Thank you for the Twitch Prime, the Happy Traveler. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Forge and two Robo facilities on the way up here from Trap, so getting that underway. A couple of probes going down as it's actually the Oracles that come in there. The Adepts have backed off. He has forced units, and I think after forcing units, he's happy enough just to start transitioning. The double Robo is obviously going to be really important here to deal with these Roaches, get those Immortals out nice and quick, build up into that comfortable number. What's the plus one in charge on the way? But it's going to take a little while for that to be here, so this is going to be maybe if Solo did commit, it would be kind of maybe the toughest attack to deal with for the, for the moment because... There just isn't really anything out. That said, there's also no road speed, etc. for the Roaches. They're also pretty low-tech units as well. The Queen's jumping on the Oracles there. So again, dealing just a little bit of damage. We still see Adepts and Sentries continuing down to the bottom. And Overseer is taking a few shots from this Stalker. I'm just going to be able to push this uh, way over to the right-hand side. This one, Missiles, Groove Spines on the way up. Templar Archives is about to finish here from Trap as well. So Templar Archives is about to be completed as we do see the Overseer from Solar going to start morphing in also. So getting himself up into this Overseer. You know, we do see five gates on the way down. And I like, I mean, I think Traps has built up into that very stationary, cautionary position, which worked very well for him before. Now, we did see when he went into this star before with the miss upgrades and uh, so on. He did switch into Lurkers pretty fast, and the Lurkers on, uh, it was on Paul Alexander, did end up winning the game. This time it's a bit of a different style, though, from Solar. So, playing this out a little bit differently. As I do see the five drop lords on the way in, they're going to be heading across. And obviously just going to start really splitting up this army of Trap and testing his multitasking, his army splitting, and being able to defend in multiple locations. The sentries coming forward is going to be able to push those overlords back there to the right side of the oracles. I'm still just perusing the map trying to see what they can find. A couple of hydras here. Going to have to be careful about that, but he doesn't go far enough up to see the overlords. So the drop lords still around, and they're still on their way towards the bottom left-hand side. Spire on the way up here from Solo as well. So getting that Spire underway. The Oracles to the far left. Unable to do much at the moment. Uh, obviously still kind of missing the marker. They're going to see these Overlords at the last possible second. They're going to be unloading in the main base uh, by the time he knows what's up. And all these units to the right-hand side on the third. Well, I'll tell you what, he must have had something of an idea because he did sort of pull his other units across. So maybe he did figure a little bit of this out as we see Zelt charging in. Single Immortal here as well. The Swarms on the low ground push those Hydras back with ease. And this is looking to be a defense at the moment. The Immortal yeah, is maybe about to be in a little bit of trouble, but the Barrier pops and the Zelts charge in. They get right on top of the Hydras. Good defense by Trap so far. And Solar, unable to achieve anything, as now he'll split these drops up even further and really try to just do a little bit more. Cannon here to try and fight those Hydras. And again, good split from Trap, though. Leaves the Immortals in the main base. Still has the big army to deal with as he runs towards the third, but I don't think Solar can really do much here. He's got a Spire about to finish, but not with that much money. If he makes meters right now, it'd be 7 or 8, which would be, well, not overly brilliant. First Storm used, and the second Storm waiting a long time before he throws it down. We'll put it down here in the end. Those Hydras taking a good beating, and then the Immortals can pick them off so easily afterwards. Hydras dropping back down, and we see some of these probes still going down. As we see, ooh, Lings and Hydras going to jump on these Immortals. Zelt's going to keep on charging forwards as well, picking off more of these Zerglings, and again, more Lings. Well, Zelot, sorry, rather, coming in from the right-hand side. Well, they would want, they wanted to, at least. They're not going to get a chance to. High Templar going to be taken down here. 
Another Archon coming in, able to pick away a few more of these Zerglings. Still more damage being done, Roaches and Hydra still pressing through, and still looks as though Solar is somehow going to break Trap after such a good set of splits. Trap is barely hanging on here. I mean, he barely hung on earlier, and I guess it worked out for him. But this is so annoying, like a drop of Lord in the back of this mineral line as well. It's just so difficult to get to, to, well, really clean up, right? So many issues being caused right now. As you see, ooh, Mortal goes down. Of our Immortals under fire. Immortal to the top side goes down as well. Archon's going to press in with some Zealots charging forwards too. And all of those Hydras are currently getting part. Mutas will fly into the main. And they are going to be able to go for this pylon. Probe's taking some damage as well. And that's going to be GG. Solo takes game number one of this best of three. 8pm Korean Standard Time. Bottom right hand side, our purple Protoss player. This is Trap. And to the top left, our red Zerg. Give it up for Infinity Gaming Solar. Solar came out super strong when this expansion started. Damn right, that Xantim. He, uh, he was like the Korean player to beat at the start of Legacy of the Void. I think it's because Solo is a player that really embraced the Legacy of the Void beta, really embraced the kind of the new styles of play and all of that. He uh, he really had a good time um, back in the start of that. He had a really good time in the winter. Did he win the DreamHack Legacy of the Void Winter Championship? DreamHack Legacy of the Void Winter. The Rocket Legacy of the Void Championship, that was it. Was it Solo that won that? Man, I remember Parting versus TY in that uh, tournament. Yeah, Solo did win that event against Parting in the finals. I remember that as well because um, Parting TY was such a good series. It was so sick. That was a pretty cool event in general, actually. It was uh, pretty sick. Man. That was, a, that was a really cool tournament. I loved that format as well. It was like... Round robin best of threes for four groups, six players, into a double elim bracket. It was just awesome. It was really awesome. There is Probe here from Trap has been scouting around in the early stages. It's actually kind of funny because I think one of the first Kareem players to ever play in my events was probably Solar as well. Back when I was just running like smaller cups and stuff. Solar and a player called Armani, who was also on Samsung Galaxy, is kind of like a mini Solar. Um. They, uh, they used to play in a lot of my uh, online events, and I remember one time they were able to win one out, and that yeah, was really cool. Back in the good old days of SC2 Improve, ay ay ay. Takes you back, you know, when you start thinking about it. We ran so many of those little events and things, it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. We did so much back then. I guess not so much. I mean, it was all like over a long period of time, and if you look at it now, I'd probably do the same amount in a year, but we'd like really build up the hype, and oh my god, it's like the semi finals. Adept picks up a drone as it shades back out into the center of the map here, so Adept getting a little bit of damage done. And actually, we'll just continue to shade back home now. As you see another Adept and a Phoenix being produced, so. Stargate going to be used a little bit differently from Trap this time around. Phoenix rather than straight into the Oracle. For any particular reason, I don't necessarily think so. Just another way to open with the Stargate, and it keeps things interesting by doing it a little bit different each time. Um, just kind of keeps the Pro Zeg play on edge, because it does change up a couple of timings and a couple of bits and pieces. Nothing too major, though, for the most part. Overlord does get taken down there by the Phoenix, as again, the Zergling's going to be sat up here, and... Just waiting to see what comes across. Actually going to be seeing the Adepts right away, but that's two dead Zerglings for that information. Four more Zerglings on the way out here from Solar. They're going to be coming in towards the Natural. as a Phoenix working its way through this Overlord? And a couple of Adepts trying to see... What they can do is Phoenix still just hanging out. Twilight Council in the Robo Facility. On the way down, going to be seeing another couple of gateways on the way up here from Trap as well. So all of this just getting set up. 
and rolling. And again, Phoenix and the Oracle just hanging around to the top. Twilight Council is about to finish up. A couple of gates still coming into play. Phoenix just poking his way through that Overlord, still pushing it back a little bit. And there's the Temple Archives coming in now from Trap as he goes into that War Prism. So just going to switch this up into some Archon Drops to keep up the pressure from here. And so we'll see what he does with his Rotron. A few moments of calm before we continue on, apparently. Let's do get this underway. A few things showing up onto the right side there. A couple of adepts to respond pretty quickly. They do respond pretty quickly as well. In fairness, they were right on top of that. No, uh, no messing around. Swords Ling is back out into the scent on the bottom. A Ling moving around. A couple of Ling's moving around. There's those Archons, the Ling's a little bit unlucky not to find them, but I don't think they would have had the time to actually kill the uh, Archons anyways. Now the Archons going to get ready to come in towards the fair. The first Roach is on the way up though, so again that defense of units. They're going to be out on time. Again, Solo just knows exactly when he needs those. And boom, has them exactly on point right there as one Roach goes down just like that. Circling's unable to find an entrance on the natural expansion too. That's fully walled off by Gateway, Zeld, and Cybercall. Yeah, all good then. I just then just gonna start up that Groove Spines upgrade as well. Oh, got probes going down from those Zerglings. Groove Spines still on the way up. Five more Hydras on the way out. And still just these Archons just perusing the map trying to see well, is there any openings? Is there any opportunity for me to get in here and to deal some damage? Again, some more creep tumors just continue to drop down. Good clean up here by Solar. Uh, by Trap, sorry. Last creep spread there is, less uh, power uh, Solar has. He was once again going to Nubitaz Carapace. Kind of feels like a similar style to what he used in game number one. If it ain't broke, then don't fix it. But we'll see what Trap obviously tries to do to fix it uh, very shortly as well. Because he will change something. There's not going no way he's just going to let himself die. Same way twice, right? So it's just very good with the fact that even when he kind of initially big, you know, went for the big drop and it wasn't going well, he then split it into two smaller drops and just kept the attention of Trap in so many different locations that eventually he was able to distract him enough to overrun. And uh, that's where the issues really started to uh, gather together. Five overlords finishing warping in here and so you've seen those Roaches and Hydras jumping up into these Dropper Lords as they will start to go out and across the map. So, so we're getting ready for this now. And Trap. Well, he has the tools. He has the Storm. He has the Immortals. He's got Charge Lots as well. And he starts to come to this point where it's just about splitting yourself up correctly. Two Archons already waiting in the main base. Around his Zalots too. You can see he's super expecting this right now. He knows what's up. He knows what's happening. Trap has figured it out through all the little things that he's picked up on throughout the game. Heading towards the main again. Zelda's knock on set out to the top side. Ling's Hydras and a couple of Roaches setting up as well. And here we go. The Drop Lords trying to come through, but uh, Archon is very quick to push them back there. Well, again, Solar just unloads from the low ground, but now he can maybe just make one big attack towards the natural. Well, he comes into the third base as well. So, I mean, there's still options for Solar, right? Oracle there. Needs to drop a Revelation. Will go down because it didn't drop it initially. He's also actually start going across the map. Stays. This will catch his only one Roach to the top side. And this Roach Hydra is left to be dealt with by the units in the main base. They're on their way over. For now, does deflect the army to the top. So he actually comes back down to the south. And will chase in to shut down a couple of these Roaches and Hydras. On the top, there's still a good amount of Hydras pushing through. But again, the Storm is very good. And the Storm is able to clean up for the moment. As well as so be careful with how much they chase here. At some point, the units can turn around. The other units weren't in position. Although well, he's actually going to get some of these Dropper Lords. That's nice because now he can't drop again with them. Uh, forces you to uh, recommit into them if you actually want to use them once more aggressively. So, Trap with a decent cleanup, a decent shutdown, but he's still losing pros because one drop of Lord didn't make into the main, and that's what Solo is so good at. Just creating those little distractions where all of a sudden, boom, an extra unit shows up to keep on defending. And so, so frustrating. 
as that Overlord does get dropped. So Overlord goes down right there. Meanwhile, still Ling's Hydras and Roaches coming through the south. They're going to be pressing up as we see. Well, I mean, a few units getting ready to already defend as Ling's do stream up into the main base though, and they will be able to go into the uh, couple of probes. There's a few probes going down as you see Hydras and Roaches on the top side. Again, Solar's just all over the place. Trap is starting to defend pretty well. It's another 12 probes lost though. And these losses to his economy really keep on adding up. I mean, his income, you can see Solo's income is starting to skyrocket. It's already been in control since he started dropping around five minutes ago. And, well, now, skyrocketing further as obviously probes keep on pulling out of position. And he keeps on just losing more as well. Solo just using all of this to buy time as he transitions up into the hive. Spire about to finish also. At this point, the Provost just has to continue being the defender, though. There's not really much else he can do about it. Picks off a couple of roaches. As the Grey Spy comes up, he's already got Blink on the way, so it's a very good preemptive setup to deal with Brood Lords. Now, Blink Stalkers on their own don't usually do enough, but having that Blink can be a really useful kind of extra follow-up to help clean up. As this is, again, good defense by Trap, still not really losing much here. He's Amores on the bottom side in some trouble, because they're kind of on their own. So that was a little bit of a shame. Uh, no Zelts or anything to kind of tank for them, otherwise he probably wouldn't have lost an Immortal. So the supply kind of low, but he is making Corruptors again. He is tacking up. Arm your solar gathering together. Finds the Phoenix out in the front as well. Ooh, I'll tell you what though. Trap's actually coming in from the top side, so he's actually going to try and jump on that for a moment there. Didn't quite work out. Some of these Hydras moving around on the far upper right side. A little bit of a push as well. Some Roaches and Hydras also momentarily in some trouble. Getting pushed back. Overall, though, Trap's still holding on pretty nicely. And Trap's killing it at the minute, I'm telling you. I've seen this army just gathering up out the front. A few Hydras going to come in and knock down some rocks. Seven Broodlords morphing in. I mean, I've liked Trap's defense, but obviously this is the most difficult part. Getting up to a fourth base as Broodlords come in. Well, he has that Fleet Beacon, so the first Tempest pops out here, warps in, and it starts to move forwards. This Tempest going to be joined up in the front in a second. Uh, there's Immortals. Going to come down this round. They're going to get themselves a couple of Roaches already. All right, so that's pretty nice as well. Brood's still coming over. Army of Solar splits up a little bit and again set to keep on pressing in here. Brood Lords picking off one High Templar right away. Nice storm on the Hydras. Ah, the High Templar being targeted by the Brood Lords and that's really nice. Storm. Uh, not enough storms coming down at all here. He had so many available, but he saw so many HTs so quickly. And that's the last storm and there is just not really enough to follow up, right? Oh, one more storm. Even if these Broods are going down though, these Hydras might be able to overwhelm. It's a lot of Immortals. Well, we're about to find out. I feel like with the Broodlings, the Hydras should be able to break through those Immortals. A uh, Mothership will show up, but there's an Overseer anyways. And there you have it. Solo wins the rematch against Trap. And Trap is going to find himself eliminated here from the group.